I love Lego. It's amazing. It was a huge part of my childhood growing up, and even today as an adult, I still buy them because I really love collecting minifigures, and come on, let's be honest, we're all just after the Lego Seinfeld figure. Because of the Lego company's large sphere of influence around the world, I know that I'm not alone in my passion for Lego, and I bet if you're watching this, you've had it impact your life in one form or another at any time in your life, and hey, maybe in the future as well. Today, I thought I'd combine my love for LEGO with my fascination of lost media, so I've compiled 10 pieces of lost media regarding such. So, with that being said, sit back, relax, grab a snack, start building something cool, and get cozy, because today, we're talking about 10 lost pieces of LEGO media. Number 10 Various online stop-motion animations. This one is pretty mild, mainly in the sense of it not being strictly from LEGO, but media that utilizes the product for their content. If you've been in the LEGO scene on YouTube or Instagram or maybe even TikTok, then you know that LEGO stop-motion animations are pretty common among the community. I threw this into the list mainly because of how prevalent and impactful LEGO stop-motion content has been to the LEGO scene on the internet. When I was doing research for this video, I searched up LEGO related posts on the Lost Media subreddit and I was pretty surprised to see that there were multiple posts from different channels, videos, and so on regarding LEGO stop motion. Now, I don't touch internet lost media all that often because I honestly don't know where to start with that kind of stuff, and not all of it appeals to me, but this piqued my interest because I used to have that same spark of fascination with the genre and even attempted to make my own LEGO stop motion stuff, all of which were horrible because I was 14 at the time and had no idea what I was doing, so that was fun. There's not really any specific time frames for deleted LEGO stop motion videos. Some might have gone down because of copyright, some might have gone down because the creator wanted it to, who knows at this point. As far as finding some of these videos, the only way to go about it would be by reaching the people who animated them, and even then, if the channels are down, it's gonna be hard as all heck to contact these creators. You also have to consider that there are a lot of different channels and some of them may have created hundreds of videos and may not have saved them all on a personal device or cloud or whatever. If you're interested in LEGO stop motion stuff and lost media, definitely go check out the post about it on the lost media subreddit. It provides a good number of channels or videos and hey, maybe you may remember some of it. Regardless, it's a good place to start looking if you're interested in searching. Number 9. Ninjago Voice Auditions so, LEGO Ninjago is one of LEGO's best-selling non-licensed action themes. I'm a big Ninjago fan myself, and wow, did the ending of Seabound really tear me up inside. So if you're familiar with the voice acting world, or hey, maybe in the acting world in general, most actors whose agents find them a gig need to attend, or in this case record, an audition. For example, the name of the character is given, along with the show, and a few lines to read off of. Ninjago is no different, in fact, a good portion of the auditions of the show's voice team have actually been shown on YouTube. Brent Miller, the voice actor of the white nindroid master of ice Zane, has a YouTube channel which has showcased various auditions for characters such as Vincent Tong's audition for Kai and Kirby Morrow's audition for Ren, who would soon become Jay, with that part going to Michael Adamwaite. Kirby Morrow would later go on to get the role of Cole, the Earth Ninja. However, some of the voice auditions haven't been released. There are still very important characters who have yet to have their auditions shown off. Then you have the villains for each season, which no public recordings of the Pythor audition, the Overlord audition, Moro, Harumi, and so on. Also, you have secondary characters like Dareth. Plus, the only ones who we have heard are people who actually got the role. What about the others who auditioned? Obviously, we would need the consent of the people recording to even have those released, but as far as I know, Tommy and Drayson, one of the creative minds behind Ninjago, actually has those recordings. He had also sent them to Brent Miller in hopes that he would use them on his YouTube channel. I gotta say, the most interesting thing I find about these auditions are the uses of the draft names. When I say draft names, I'm referring to the names of the characters before they were made official. For example, Jay was originally written as Ren. In the audition Vincent Tong recorded for Kai, you can hear him referring to a character named Aya. This character would soon go on to become Nia, Kai's sister. You could also hear him mention Lord Demic, who would become Lord Garmadon. The whole pre-production part of the Ninjago is so interesting, and these recordings are considered lost in the sense of some of them being available and the dates which they were recorded. 
You could have something from 2010 for an original audition for one of the four ninja, or you could have something as recent as 2019 or 2020 for an audition for a character from The Island or Seabound or whatever's next. Still though, these recordings remain lost until they are completely released. Number 8. The Lego Batman Movie 2 So, the Lego Batman movie... that was something. I actually remember seeing this in theaters when it came out, and wow, was it different from the original Lego movie. It provides the story of Batman getting a sidekick, his connection with Robin, and of course, we get the Joker. Lego Batman was one of those well-performing themes, and I'm saying was here because I honestly don't know the last time I saw a Lego Batman set that wasn't directly related to Justice League or the movie. I actually remember playing the Lego Batman video game on my DS Lite as well, so those were good times. Needless to say, the success was enough to get this theme a movie. The movie, released in 2017, has acquired a rating of 7.3 out of 10 stars on IMDb. It had great marketing with the toys, people were excited for a new Batman on the screen, and wow, it was just fantastic for its fans. And thus, planning was made for a sequel movie. The sequel, which had the title of Lego Super Friends, was written by Dan Harmon and Michael Waldron. As you can guess by the title, the movie was supposed to feature the Justice League, and specifically focus on Batman's opinion on Superman. This would continue the Batman development that was started in the first movie, which focused on his connection with Robin. It would undoubtedly focus on Batman coming out of his shell and probably being annoyed at first with the Super Friends, then warming up to the idea of the group. The project would have expanded the whole cinematic LEGO DC universe, so there's no doubt that the project would have been quite ambitious. If you don't know who the writers are, allow me to give you one quick example of work from each writer. Dan Harmon is a co-creator of Adult Swim's Rick and Morty, Michael Waldron is the producer and writer for Loki. So there's definitely a bunch of creativity going on between these two minds. The cover of the screenplay is the only available media that we have of the movie, which you can see both of their names and the different media that inspired the film. It's unknown if this project will ever be picked up again, but until the screenplay is released, the film is lost media. Number 7, LEGO Racers The Video Game LEGO Racers The Video Game was a planned game to be released on the DS and Wii in the early 2010s. They honestly should have renamed the game to something more convenient because it literally has the same name as a 1999 LEGO Racers game that was released on PC, Game Boy, Nintendo 64, and PlayStation. The Lost Game was originally teased on the boxes of different LEGO Racer sets, yet it never saw a release. The promotion for the game started in 2009, and it wasn't until 2013 that anyone got any sort of update, or really news, regarding the game. The game was being made by Firebrand Games, which in 2013, a developer from the company had posted just quick little tidbits of what work had been completed, as well as some screenshots. The developer had said that the game was intended for the DS, however, the resolutions of the screenshots show that the game could have worked on the Wii. The developer said that they honestly had no idea why the game was cancelled and unreleased, especially considering that there was no clear reason, but it was just never finished. From what's available of the game online, we can see two screenshots of some gameplay, as well as a good look at the HUD. The audience members of the race in the game are just literally JPEGs of average LEGO minifigures, so that's neato. One screenshot shows an aerial view, and it's sort of focused on a helicopter, although I don't think you'd be able to race in it because, you know, it's a, it's a helicopter. The vehicles shown from in-game were different LEGO racer sets that you could actually buy. There's a video that showcases a 360 view of each car, as well as an animation walk cycle for a LEGO minifigure. All in all, pretty neat, and I'd even consider playing it if I had the chance. Number 6, the alternate draft of the LEGO Ninjago movie. Uh-oh, another Ninjago entry. Man, I'm having a field day with this video. So I saw the LEGO Ninjago movie on the day of its premiere, and with me being a longtime Ninjago fan, I noticed that there were a lot of conflicting opinions on this movie, and that's as far as I'll say about that. The plot focused on Lloyd Garmadon and the ninja team's adventure to find the ultimate ultimate weapon to stop Miyatro from destroying the city, with Lloyd bonding with Lord Garmadon as father and son. However, the original plans for the movie would have closely followed what the TV series had set up. After all, we do know that the TV show doesn't have a giant monster cat destroying Ninjago City. I, I mean, unless Miyatra is the Venge Stone buyer, but I, I, I doubt that. So during the production of the movie, there were many times that it was rewritten or changed or whatever, but there is a version of the story that had some completed animation and storyboards, so that's the one that we're going to be taking a look at. 
One of the things Ninjago is most well known for is its implementation of snake characters or serpentine as villains. This is shown by the various serpentine tribes in the first season, the anachondrite cultists in the fourth season, the vermilion in the seventh season, and Asphira in the fire chapter. During the production of the movie, it was planned for there to be various snake villains, as seen in some concept art. This concept was scrapped for unknown reasons, although I think that it might have been that it wouldn't have been too marketable, considering the movie came out around the same time as the seventh season, Hands of Time. So there would be two separate Ninjago lines with serpentine villains. And speaking of Hands of Time, time travel was meant to play a large role in the storyline, with the teen traveling back in time to prevent Lord Garmadon from being bitten by the Great Devourer. A quick animation of the storyline actually exists online, with Lloyd interacting with the young Garmadon talking about the fears of not living up to their legacy. I have no idea how this would have ended, either with Garmadon staying evil or turning good. With the TV show's small additions from the movie, it would have definitely changed the storyline. The eighth season of the show followed after the release of the movie, and while the movie is not canon, it featured the return of Lord Garmadon as evil. However, I believe that if he had turned good in the movie, he would have been brought back as good somehow. Whatever the case, this draft of the movie is lost, and it's unknown how much work was actually completed from it. Number 5. Legends of Chima, Time of Heroes I feel like I was the only one of the few people that didn't hate Chima with a burning passion. The show and the toy line had a bit of a negative reception due to the majority of people believing it was here to replace Ninjago after the second season had ended. And yeah, I can understand that, I actually believe that was the plan for the series, but Ninjago was renewed and kept going. Personally, I would have eased everyone into the concept. Like the first TV trailer I saw for Chima aired immediately after I saw the season 2 finale. You know, I would have waited a little bit longer for that, but, but hey, that's just me. I thought the show was actually pretty decent to be fair. I rewatched all three seasons and I feel like there should have been a little bit more of finality to the ending, although I did like it because it left the imagination open to viewers. I, I mean seriously, look at this landscape, it's amazing. Tommy and Drayson, one of the creative minds behind Chima, had posted a picture on Twitter of the movie's poster. It featured Laval, Krager, and Eris all on the poster with their weapons drawn. Above them is the title of the movie, stylized in a unique font, and below it is a list of actors, and directly below that is a date. From what Tommy and Drayson has said about the movie, it was written for Christmas of 2015. Therefore, we can assume that the date on the poster is 2015. In 2021, Tommy and Drayson was using the hashtag 24 days of Chima to post all kinds of neat behind the scenes content for Chima on Twitter. This included concept drawings, different ideas behind characters, one of my favorites being the origins of the character Dom de la Wouche, and more stuff like that. On a tweet about a concept for how Speed Wars would work, Tommy was asked if he had ever thought about reviving Shima, to which he replied, Under the right conditions with the right people. I have scripts waiting in a drawer. This means that not only does Tommy and Drayson have possible ideas on how to continue the Chima storyline, but he also holds onto the scripts. This could lead to the possibility of him having the Time of Heroes script. The movie had to have gotten far enough to have a working title, we know that, and it already had the voice actors ready for it. Additionally, the title for the movie has a stylized infinity symbol on it. I have no idea if this has any meaning, whether it was intentional for storyline or for design choice. It's just something that I'd like to point out. There's really not a lot to say about this one other than a rough draft of the script has to exist somewhere, at the very least. Number 4, The Scrapped Lego Technic Game. So, Lego Technic is kinda cool. I try to follow their Mindstorms theme because they're so amazing. Like, honestly, I can never figure that kind of stuff out. So when I see this theme, I go absolutely bonkers. So interestingly, we not only know about this cancelled Lego Technic game from an old Lego Rock Raiders forum site, it comes from a quote from Dave Upchurch, who produced the Lego chess game. The quote reads, I remember working on a Lego Technics game featuring vehicles exploring an alien world. You collected bricks and using morphing stations to change your vehicle between different forms, each of which had different abilities and used them at the right time and place to get past obstacles in your way. It didn't get very far, just an early demo. We lost confidence in the developer to deliver, so we canned it. So obviously Dave has credibility, we know that this game got far enough to have an early demo. I couldn't really find anything else about this conceptual game outside of the forums post about Dave's quote. 
I'll be honest, I don't know how well LEGO would have integrated the game with their products. Similar to the LEGO Racers game I talked about earlier, I can imagine that there was a plan to take the vehicles in the game and turn them into actual LEGO sets. That's probably the most marketable approach to the whole thing. There's not a set time frame for this kind of thing, so I'm gonna attempt to make my own little makeshift time frame. LEGO Technic had originally started in 1977 as the Technical Sets line, however in 1982 it was renamed to LEGO Technic. LEGO Chess was released back in 1998, Rock Raiders was released in 1999, and the Forum Post was made in 2013. For the sake of this timeline, I'm going to assume that the Technic game started production after LEGO Chess was released, so we have a late 90s, early 2000s timeline. To be honest, I have no idea where we can go from here. An early demo had been made, but we have no clue who it would be with. But I'm just going to say that it's likely with LEGO or with a game producer on that team. Number 3. Beneath the Fantasy LEGO Island was kind of funny. Oh, who am I kidding? How could you not love LEGO Island? The 1997 game was so popular that the team behind it began working on a sequel. If you're versed in your LEGO Island lore, then you know that there's already a sequel game that came out in 2001, called The Brickster's Revenge. However, there's a planned sequel before that. So in 1999, production of a LEGO Island sequel game had began development. The game was being developed between LEGO and Mindscape, however the project was scrapped after the contract between the two was lost. According to Wes Jenkins, director for LEGO Island, there were all sorts of conflicts during the production of the game. There were actually six more games in planning when the contract was cut, and Beneath the Fantasy was left behind. The game was set to take place in the ocean, but that's all that's really known about the plot of the game. It had been teased in the original LEGO Island game, which meant that Beneath the Fantasy was an idea during the production of the original game. There's not a clue about any sort of remaining media regarding the production of the game. I can't find any articles or posts about any kind of beta builds or teasers outside of LEGO Island, but hey, I found a creepypasta, so that's kind of funny. Honestly, I wouldn't know where these things are. Heck, I would love to know what the plans were for those other six games, because LEGO invested a lot of money into their contract with Mindscape. The only ideas that I have is that Mindscape may have somehow held onto the builds or projects for the game, or the stuff was all given over to LEGO since it's their product, but really, who knows? Number 2, Bionicle, The Legend Reborn Trilogy Films We can't talk about LEGO media without talking about Bionicle. Seriously dude, this theme was and still is amazing. Bionicle began in 2001 as a step into LEGO's plans for an action theme driven by story, and Wow, did it set the stage for original action themes. So The Legend Reborn was meant to kickstart a Bionicle Trilogy movie series, however the theme was discontinued and thus it was not pursued any further. The original Legend Reborn movie was released as a direct-to-video film in 2009, and the trilogy was ultimately scrapped. The movie was actually produced by Threshold Animation Studios and was released by Universal, as opposed to the first three movies. Even the original Legend Reborn movie had gone through various tweaks to the storyline before getting to its final release. I have no doubt that a few of the original scripts or drafts for the story had set up this story for any sort of sequel or the rest of the planned trilogy. I imagine that the people who wrote this movie may have written additional plans for the cancelled trilogy of movies. There's not really much to say about these cancelled movies because it's nearly impossible finding additional information about them. There's not an available storyline for them online or anything. They're only briefly mentioned on the production section on the Wikipedia page for The Legend Reborn. Bionicle was brought back in 2015, and it didn't last very long. I don't think the plans for the trilogy were ever revisited during this brief revival. However, I won't put it out of the realm of possibility. And personally though, I honestly can't see these movies ever coming up again in the future, if I'm being completely honest. The field of LEGO media has changed exponentially since the time of Bionicle, and it would take a massive shift with the theme to adjust to these times. Sure, Bionicle is nostalgic, but these movies won't ever be released. They exist in concept form. Sure, we know that, but we have nothing else to work with regarding the existence of these movies. Number 1. The Billion Brick Race this last entry is huge. As we all know, LEGO has had success with their movies, and a bunch of films have spawned from the original one. These include the LEGO Batman movie, the LEGO Ninjago movie, and the LEGO Movie 2, the second part. In 2015, it was announced that another LEGO movie would begin development, titled The Billion Brick Race. The movie was set to be written by Jason Siegel. The concept of the movie was inspired by the 1981 film The Cannonball Run, and although details about the movie were kept pretty private, we do know that this would have been a racing film. 
you, you know, if you couldn't tell from the title. Jorge Gutierrez, the director of the movie Book of Life, was on the development team as well. An article from Hollywood Reporter about Gutierrez joining the team says that the project was originally with Jason Siegel, so I have no idea if this means he was no longer on the project by the time Gutierrez joined the team. However, Gutierrez's tenure on the project was short-lived, as he would announce on Facebook that, after nine months, he was no longer involved in the project. The movie was supposed to release in 2019, alongside the LEGO Movie 2, however, that never happened. I believe the reasoning for this was the failure of the LEGO Ninjago movie. Sure, it, it did okay, but it got mixed reviews and it, it sort of flopped, so the plan was to wait out and see how the second LEGO movie performed, and well, unfortunately things weren't so good for that either, and it was a second box office disappointment for LEGO movies, so the Billion Brick Race was ultimately put onto the back burner. There's concept art of the movie that exists online, however the fate of the movie itself is unknown, as of March of 2022, there haven't been any plans about reviving the movie. I think personally that if they were to ever touch this topic again, they'll have to reinvent the movie into something far more different than what it was. The writing of the LEGO movies at the time just weren't cutting it for audiences, and as we move forward with more groundbreaking cinema masterpieces, the LEGO company will have to adapt to the newer market to break the mold. I'm certain that some drafts exist out there, and I honestly hope that one day they'll surface online. So there we have it, just 10 pieces of LEGO lost media. I had to search pretty far for some of these topics, and as a longtime fan of LEGO, I've gotta say that these are some of my favorite things and I'm glad that I know about them now. Just being able to imagine what some of these would be like is amazing on its own. Heck, I'd love to see everything on this list get found one day. If you know about any other forms of LEGO Lost Media, please reach out to me in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more of my content, consider subscribing, it's free, and you can click that bell icon to be notified of my next upload. Check the description for my social media so you can always be caught up on what kind of video stuff I'm doing while it happens, or you know, if you just care about what I have to tweet, which, you know, isn't isn't that much. As always, guys, it's been a blast, and I will see you all next time. Peace!